Good day guys, come here, welcome back to Langries and News from the Future. So right, we're officially now marching on to Langries 6.0 and definitely a new year ahead, we gotta introduce new changes. So from now on my video will be combining the introduction of the characters and their voice actors with the video of the characters, talents, skills, and three C's. And this time around, I'll try my best to not repeat the skills so we can try to um, not make the video too lengthy and hope everyone will be happy about it. So are you guys ready? Here we go. So for the month of September, we welcome one hero and one heroine, one is Andrea and the other heroine will be known as Nemia. So on part one of this video, we'll be going through on Andrea first and watch to the end for the translations I've done for you guys for the for the hero's talent, exclusive skills and 3C. So guys ready? Let's get started. So very great thanks to information shared and provided by the Langriza mobile app Monghua Moizan Soyu. So this is the new hero, Andre, and he's kind of like a future advanced version of Leon, in my opinion. So this is how his character design looks like. It's very cool, especially his armor and costume. This time around, they are definitely wearing more than the usual Empire team. And it's the usual Ikemen guy. So it's kind of like a mix of Leon and Lonford Art. So yep, um, quick introductions. So Andre is voiced by none other than Toriyumi Kosuke-san, whom has previously voiced his work through On the, right, on the left, I know the anime. On the right, um, I know the name, but I do not watch the show. On the left will be Basilisk. He is voicing the male leading character, Koga Kosuke. And on the right, he is voicing as a character from Token Rambu. Um, on the right, is definitely more of a famous by the female fans. Uh, sorry, pardon me for not knowing much about that. And... Let us hear his speech. So yep, he's the <coughs> as we say the Hampson led, honorable led, with um, very honorable wording and sentence that's basically kind of like Leon. So apparently he is from the Empire star, uh, the Empire faction. So he's hoping to bring victory for the Empire. Or should I say he's very confident that the Empire will, has, will be the final victor and they will leave. It was him to say he will leave. They will leave. A millenn a spell a curse that has lasted for over millennium, and the emperor Taya Fury, Tyrant Fury, will be the one ending this all. So let's hear again. Right, then last but not least, um, characters you have inter kind of like relation with is with Roland and apparently because he he hates or has a distaste for Roland who as the son of his kingdom when he noticed or saw um Roland's dad die under the hands of 
Tyrone Fury, um, the expressions or the performance by Roland is abnormally cold, and Roland's attitude towards um, Empire, the, the the King Empire, the Empire's King Tyrone Fury is not. Um, he don't really care about him, or should we say he don't give a damn? And this caused um, the loyalty Andro to be very angry and full of hatred towards him. He got he just got very pissed off. So after receiving command from Tyron Fury, he swear that um, even if he have to travel through the whole of Toy War, he must capture Roland. So, all right, we have come to the end of the introduction and we will now be moving on to introducing the talent, skills, and tree C. So, all right, on drills, faction first. So, as you can see, um, personally, I don't like the new changes they did. So, apparently, there has been some changes. This time around, they... They have not been showing the icon as usual. They uh, instead they write in text. So from left to right, it's um, okay. As you can see, blue it's empire. So the middle is purple, it's tactical master, and on the right, orange it's meteor faction. So these are the three factions. Andros will be on. So he's definitely in the, the in thing right now because um, Bernhard is back with his SP form, so he has one faction, and Grand Shu is a tactical faction buffer, so he has great synergy with these two heroes. Okay, coming to the hero's talent. So at rank 6, the talent is roughly translated or loosely translated as King's Guard Determination or King's Royal Guard Determinations. Right, so this time around I will not be repeating and the talent effects are as follow. Number one, when there is no ally one ring or circle around you, increase Andro's attack and defense by 20%. Number two, once per match or per battle, you can target a non summon ally and cast this talent effect, Pledge Loyalty. After casting, you will gain a common aura effect. The effect is as follow. Both parties will gain stats increment by 15%, excluding HP value. Then, when an ally with Pledge Loyalty kill an enemy, or when the ally dies, recover Andro's unit HP by 100%. Last, if you have already end your turn when any of the above occurred, you will be able to act again. 3. The third effect, when Plotch Loyalty Ally die, you will gain another effect known as Hostile. Hostile effect are as follow. First, movement will not be affected by terrain anymore. Second, when Andreas enter battle, he will be able to attack first and ignore 30% of enemies' defend. Okay, last but not least, do note that pledge loyalty and hostile effect cannot be dispelled nor immune. Command aura of similar effect cannot happen or trigger at the same time, and the act again effect can only trigger once per turn. So based on text alone right now with his talent, he personally give me a mixture of a combination of 
Leon with Lanford. So he has, and again, from this new type of heroes, uh, the six my own generations, um, they go off with self um, stats increment like self walking faction buff. He has like increased attack and defense by 20%. Then um, he has stats increment of 15%, excluding HP value. This is very similar to Lunfort talent, but um, in Andreo case, it is limited to only two parties, him and the target allies. However, this is a global effect. He can um, target anytime, anywhere, which is pretty cool. Uh, unlike Lunfort, who is restricted to um, allies, has to be two to three tiles around him. That is very restricted. Then, not to mention that he has self act, act again with when an allies with pledge loyalty kill an enemy or when they die, and at the same time, he will be recovered with 100% HP. So it's pretty strong and scary to see that um, Andreas will be able to act again at full HP. HP stats, this is very um, crazy and this definitely will pressurize enemies and um, when the ally dies, he can gain hostile and he can attack first plus ignoring 30% of enemies defense, that's yeah, pretty crazy and awesome so alright, um, watch till the end for the translations I've done for you guys again so okay, up next we will be going through on his exclusive skills. Okay, so his exclusive skill one. This effect should be known as Purge. It's as the following is a 1C cost. The C, it has a CD of 4. The range is self targeting. The AoE type is single targeting and again effect. It, is, it has both passive and active. So oh, let's go with the passive skill first. Okay, passive effect. When there are own pledge loyalty ally tree blocks around you, the following effect will happen. Number one, you will not die from a death blow from the enemy. Number two, or sorry, basically number one, you will not die from a death blow, be it enemy or allies. Number two, You'll be revived with 20% HP. It can only be triggered once per battle. So it's pretty cool that um, Empire Cavalry Offensive Unit has stats increment. This is a self walking faction buff. And it has skills that gave him um, revival effect. That's pretty cool. A lot of synergy. I can see right now. Okay, moving on to his active skills effect. So active effect are as followed. Number one, after casting these skills, you obtain immunity, and you when you move, you ignore enemy blockage effect for two turns. Number two, you will be able to move three blocks and attack again. Number three, buff you have will not be reduced when you act again so this is his own type of chivalry the only downside is that um, these skills do not provide a uh, HP recovery like chivalry um, however based on his talent you don't really need um, how do we say HP recovery for from it So alright, moving on to exclusive skill 2. Like I said, um, I don't know why he is like a cavalry. He should be like a dragon knight. They should make him like a flying or dragon knight. You read? Because the one he's, he's riding <laughs> looks more like a dragon than a horse. Okay, exclusive skill 2. 
The name is known as Burning Charge. It's a two C skills, has a CD of only one. The range is one and the AoE type is physical single target. Yep, it's pretty scary to see a skills that is only an offensive skill with only one CD. It means you will be able to spam the skill every one to two turns. I mean, it's one turn if you have allies to help you act again, and it's going to be two, two turns before you can recast it again. So the effect is follow. Number one, attack and deal 1.5 times damage to a target enemy. Number two, before battle, deduct 30% of your current HP and deal it as fixed damage to enemy of the deduct value or the deducted value. So, um, in case any one of you who are new to language and don't quite get an effect, I'm going to do some explanation. So, attack and deal 1.5 times damage to an enemy, and everyone knows. So, before battle, um, so let's say your actual HP is 15%. That's your max value. However, um, after some battling, right now, your HP value is only 10,000. So, when you cast these skills, when you try to fight your enemy before battle, you will deduct current HP value of 30%, which is 3,000. 30% of 10,000 is 3,000. So you will deal 3,000 as fixed damage to the enemy. And at the same time, you will deduct off 3,000 from your current HP. So you'll be left with 7,000. Um, it's a double-edged sword, but the value is definitely high. And... This skill is very good and efficient if you are very confident with your stats and you have to do some pre-calculation that you definitely know you will survive or you can use a combo mix with the first exclusive skills which will give you revival skills. Then second is that it's definitely efficient to fight against enemy who are wearing items like Last Right. You have to break their 100% HP value and then they'll definitely die from this blow. So yeah, it's pretty cool and awesome. But um, again, it's a double-edged sword. It depends on how confident you are with your character stats. So best is um, you do some testing with your friends before you decide to use the skills in Apex or in PvE. Okay, last but not least, we're moving on to his tree C. So, it's a skill with both passive and active, pretty cool. So, the 3C effect is known as Incursion Against Destiny or Strike Against Destiny. So, as you can see, it has a CD of 5, the range is 1, the AoE type is Physical Single Target. <clears throat> so, alright, for passive, when you end your turn, Recover both you and the Pledge Loyalty Allies HP by 15%. Two. When you have Hostile Effect, you will double the healing amount, which is 30%. So, okay, with the introduction of his 3C, this... Actually, he's giving great synergy for his act again and his exclusive too. So you increase your HP as much as you can before um, the 30% deduction. So you'll be dealing um, as much fixed damage as you can. Then when any of your pleasure loyalty allies dies, you gain the hostile effect. Your healing will go to double, which is 30%. Okay, moving to active so the effect is follow number one attack and do 1.8 times damage to target enemy number two dispel five buff before battle from enemy three if there are own pledge loyalty ally or when you have hostile effect your attack will ignore guard and your damage deal will increase 
by an addition 20%. 4. If you kill an enemy with this skills, reduce this skill CD by 5 and you will be able to move 3 blocks again. 5. If the enemy is not killed by these skills instead, you can act against once more. So if either of the effect 4 or 5 trigger, there will be a cooldown effect of 2 turns before you can trigger either skill effect again. So overall, I gotta say it is very cool and very great for Andrew, especially his treasy. Um, this is definitely the characters, a great characters with great synergy with his overall with his talent, exclusive skills, and treasy. They have a great synergy running around, unlike um, our older generation heroes where they have great talent but the skills are not, don't have great synergy with the skills or they have weak talents but great skills. So overall it is very cool that um, his 3C deals 1.8 times damage, it's one of the highest and it's basically like a sword. So you will dispel 5 buff on enemies before battle then um, if you have pledge loyalty allies who are still alive or if they are dead you gain the hostile effect your 3C will ignore God, then the damage will increase by 20%. This is almost like a, I, I guess it's almost like a sure kill effect if um, Andreos is not at very low HP or has any weak debuff. Then not to mention that um, this 3C give him um, either great kill or great survivability. So the fourth effect, if you manage to kill the enemy, you'll reduce the skills by 5 turns meaning you will be able to spend the skill again either when you act again or your next moving turn because um, the skill will be reduced by 5 and he can move 3 blocks again you can run back to your tank then like the fifth effect said even if the enemy is not killed by these skills you can act against once more so you can have the option to choose to attack again or you can run back to your tank to um, adjust your team and wait for the next turn. So yep, it's pretty cool. Personally, I feel it's pretty cool for Andreas. So I'm not sure what did you guys think. If he's good, bad, or very awesome, leave it down in the comment sections below and stick to the end for the translations again and this is Kami, remember to like and subscribe see you guys on the next part of the video featuring Namias, talent, factions, exclusive skills and 3C. This is Kami, remember to like and subscribe and goodbye, see you guys.